Oh, it's turbo time. Hello everyone. So today and maybe tomorrow I will be trying to replace my turbo for this Range Rover L322 with BMW M57 diesel engine. My turbo is in real bad condition. The engine is constantly losing power, sucking in, in fail safe or I don't know what. But I know I want to take out the turbo and look how it is looking. Because this turbo is making strange noises and not always working. This engine has power maybe 50-50. Sometimes it has, sometimes it don't. So let's try to dig out turbo and see what is happening. So top uh, bolts of a turbo should be accessible by here from the air filter box. Here's the metal plate which is also needed to be removed. And when it's removed I should see three turbo bolts. I don't know about you, but this bolt is oh my god, how hard to reach. I'm trying to take off uh, air intervals. At this point, it was the hardest part. So nice. Moving on. Ta-da! Get it! Intercoolers! Okay, intercooler pipe has... Well, yeah, it's a turbo. Ta-da! Very important bolt. Time to unbolt oil drain from turbo okay and now what is left is two bolts on the engine block and turbo should be free okay. okay time to remove the turbo So here are, here are my two turbos. This is the old one, GT2556V and this is old brand new GT2260V. This turbo is a bit smaller and a bit weaker. So it works extra hard on this Range Rover and now it has problems. Some, something is wrong inside of it. So it definitely needs a rebuild. But for just rebuild the turbo I decided to upgrade the turbo. So I bought a bigger one from BMW X3 with 3 liters diesel and 150 kilowatts. The main the main and most important part is it was control it is controlled by vacuum. So it should be fine. It has differences but everything can everything can be fixed. The main part this is identical to the old turbo. Also front looks identical more or less so should be good biggest difference is uh, the air that is being pushed out of a turbo this one is more like classic styles but this one has different mounting so i had to buy a new pipe from old bmw e60 maybe i don't know oh no 
it's from BMW X5 uh, facelifted because it has M57N engine. So this one fits here perfectly. And now I just need to solve a problem how to connect this part to the intercooler. It should be doable. Also, vacuum line is in a bit different positions, not a problem. This turbo is a bit bigger, it has bigger wings, so it sucks more air and pushes more air to the engine. So it should be a, just a little bit more powerful Range Rover. But we'll see. At least it will be working perfectly because I took it to restore it to brand new condition so everything is changed this part is changed changed also all inside is changed repainted and and everything is checked so this turbo is perfect also downpipe <coughs> i have this beautiful downpipe with no ecologic systems whatsoever so and it fits perfectly for this turbo my new one so that's a good news for me i'm gonna need to figure out what parts need to be changed to this one and move on okay finally i have a problem this turbo doesn't fit because of a place where air is charging out it's when this is on the top this is completely on the bottom and on the range rover in this place there is engine engine mount it just it's impossible to mount it like this so what i'm going to do i'm going to rotate just a bit this cold side of the turbo i need to unbolt these all these balls and then find the right place and later figure out figure out how to put this west gate in the place and make it working so that that's the problem that's a later problem now i need to find a place for this pipe so okay let's go Okay, bolts are, are loose and turbo's cold side is moving. Now I need to get under the car and find the correct position and tighten it. Okay, turbo is in place. It has just so so left space. You can see when it's lifted up. There is place at the bottom, so now I'm just gonna need to look where it is the best position for this charge pipe. And that would be it. I attached one bolt from the top of the turbo, so it would be in its original position. And now, now it's mounted just to check if there is place. And yes, there is space for it. What is left is to tighten its bolts. Okay, so finally fi figure out how to mount this vacuum regulator to the turbo so it would fit under the bonnet and nothing would hit into the engine. At first I tried with this one, didn't fit quite well. So I took my this part from my old turbo, it mounts to the hot side and it fits to the new turbo perfectly i just needed to make a little bit bigger hole so it could fit just a bit further from the turbo and everything fits perfectly and this regulator is in just perfect space and it fits in the engine perfectly so everything is 
perfect really happy about it and now it's time to bolt the turbo in the engine Perfect. Well, let's try. Maybe it will help to install this easier. Okay. Let's go. Let's hope that it's final installation of the turbo. Oh, to kurme. Samane prisadarioki tiesada. Well, I managed to broke it a bit, but it's still usable. The main part is still in good condition. Won't be easy. Nice. And here is the last one. And now turbo is being bolted on the exhaust manifold. Nice. Very nice. So I had to make this custom intercooler charge pipe from silicone it is 60 to 51 millimeters and 19 degrees elbow uh, original one didn't fit because this part was too narrow this part was too narrow so i had to bought what i could found closest it's a bit too narrow here too but much bigger than this one so it fits okay now it's time to install this pipe It fits perfectly. intercooler okay so advice for future genera generations that will be watching this video when you are attaching downpipe to the exhaust uh, unbolt downpipe bolts so it is adjustable and everything would fit Whew, I was worried a little. Now it's looking fine. Moving on. Should be good. Okay, I am finally finished my turbo change now a uh, turbo is changed and a little bit engine computer is modified at first we 
check how much power is after just a turbo change so only turbo changed car had 144 kilowatts and 393 newton meters it's a bit more than the stock power in stock this engine has only 130 kilowatts so after a little modifications of fuel and of increased boost it had 172 kilowatts and 532 newton meters but i'm a bit afraid that this gearbox won't hold this power so i asked them to make a bit less power so now it has 167 kilowatts and 490 newton meters these newton meters should help me to save gearbox just a bit longer but it's noticeably faster of course it's still the slow slowest engine in the range rover lineup because an nv8 engine starts with 200 kilowatts but it's enough for me it's quite enough it's really increased the low rpm power so quite nice to drive it i'm really happy and that's it for the power modifications of course dino runs were made the stock tires because i wanted to find more realistic numbers because with 35 inch size tires these numbers would be much smaller thank you for watching if you watched till, till this moment don't forget to push like subscribe and see you next time bye